Good evening and welcome back to Mobile World Congress here in beautiful Barcelona, Spain. My name is Savannah Peterson and we are at the end of day two of four days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Very excited to bring you these analyst insights to close out what has been a fantastic Tuesday here in Barca. I am joined by Dave Vellante, John Furrier, and Zias. You are a, a, a CUBE Collective member of VIP Distinguished CUBE alumni. You write for SiliconANGLE. You're basically part of the team. You're one of our posters. Yeah, well, I got a punch card, so yeah. after so many visits, yeah. the tent is free, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, we feel very lucky to have you, and, and we're excited that you have our punch card. I know that you and Dave had a very exclusive analyst access to a Cisco event this morning. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, that was interesting. So it, it starts off with Chuck giving a state of the business, and uh, uh, he was pretty frank. You know, he said that uh, a lot of what's going on with their business right now was uh, just the fact that the way I describe it actually is, you know, think of when you go to a grocery store and you're really hungry. You just Ooh, buy everything you can zone. see, right? And so yeah, we went through the pandemic where, where they had supply chain shortages and customers couldn't get anything. And so as soon as the supply chain freed up, that opened up the floodgates and customers bought lots and lots of infrastructure. It's not just Cisco saying that. You know, HPE said that, Dell said that, I've heard Juniper talk about so that. Was it Cisco? Was it Cisco event? What was the uh, round table? Oh, with? so it was uh, the, their, their analyst, round table. Cisco systems. With Cisco executives. So right, when so. you go to the Cisco booth, very nice booth, like yeah. many of the booths around play here. play by play. You go to the Cisco booth, you check in, and then they, they walk you back, and there's several rooms, maybe, I don't know, dozen rooms. Yeah. We went up the stairs, it's actually quite nice, but the rooms were small, so they brought us downstairs, sat us down in a big room, there were probably like, what, 20, 25 seats? Yeah. It was a big sort 20 of- 20 seats, square round table. Big square, they put Chuck, Jonathan, uh, Jeff Sherritt, the head of sales, the head of sales, and, and uh, uh, Mark Patterson, the Mark, yeah, which is uh, a, Chuck, a, a, chief of staff, a, chief of staff, right? And then Zias and I, of course, had the prime seats because we got there early. <laughs> yeah. so. Smart gentlemen, yeah. yeah. well no, done. It's no accident, right? It was, it was yeah. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. no yeah. accident. But Chuck sure. did start with the state of the business, and uh, one of the things that surprised me a little bit, Dave, I don't know if you picked up on this, was he did admit they've lowered expectations two quarters in a row, which he said they've never done before. And um, they had heard the noise that a slowdown was coming from customers said they were having a hard time digesting all the product they bought. But then the impact of that was greater than they realized and that's why they had reduced the numbers the second time. And Cisco is a very disciplined company. They understand pipeline and sales you know, better than anybody out there. And so the fact that they got caught off guard with that um, to me says a lot changed in that three month period, right? Yeah, so, so he yeah. said yeah, but Two they, quarters in a row, we've yeah. lowered guidance, and that's not a good thing for a CEO it's to do. It's unheard of for Cisco. So, yeah, so, so guys, he, he, breaking news, so you, we know Cisco had a 5% RIF, reduction in force, which is a across the board cut. Uh, one hour ago, tech layoffs continue at Cisco, plans to cut another 700 jobs. Wow. Yeah. The, word, the word leaked out after that, somebody told me that they were going to do it again. Mm. You know, they have to, right? They have to do this. And so, you know, lowering guidance twice, I mean, let's go back. I mean, you, you guys both remember yeah. the dot-com boom. Yeah. In February of 2000, Cisco hit over a $300 billion market cap. They were the most valuable company in the world. They were eight, over, over 800, actually. Yeah, they, yeah they, they, over 800? Yeah, they were talking about them being the first wow. trillion dollar company for a while in 2000, wow. so yeah. yeah. So, okay. Like they lost more market cap between then and 2001 than any company that ever held so market they, they've cap. they've never got wow, back to that that's level. that's a crazy data yeah. point. Yeah. Stock yeah. price was in the mid 70s up there, yeah. you know, something like that, and they've never gotten back there. They've gotten close, yeah. but never got back there. Yeah. So, any rate, a lot of people are comparing what's going on with NVIDIA to what happened with Cisco, saying, oh, it's picks and shovels. Personally, I think it's different. I don't know what you think. Well, my, my thinking is Cisco had the monopoly on routing. Everyone knows that they're having a routing system is hard to, have a, have a, have a rip, rip, rip out and replace. So competitors had to have a huge bar to get and win against Cisco because they were so nested in there. The switching costs were extremely high and costly, so they, they, all the competitors just fell by the wayside or found niches that they could come in on an angle. And then John Chambers went on an acquisition run yeah. and then they just had piece parts. So to me, I think what's different between NVIDIA and Cisco is NVIDIA actually did the work to build software that works across their core asset, in this case the GPUs. Cisco never really did anything outside of uh, their core asset routing. They had some nice businesses that stood yeah. alone, but like switches were a gift, but that's the top of rack, that's racks and routers. So you had routers and switches in racks, that's networking, they dominated. 
Outside of that, they just bought businesses and they were trying to cobble them together and then they, they, got, they rationalized it. I mean, they didn't go under, but they didn't really knock it out of the park. And I think that was probably what couldn't get them back, Dave. If I had to go back and look at that, Z, it's a little bit your perspective, but yeah, So one of me, the interesting things about, about Cisco is that they have transformed that company a lot. There's 51% ARR now. Uh, I think they're 30-something percent software. And actually, one of the things I like that Chuck said today was, um, they're not, on the earnings call, they're not going to really talk about, he doesn't want to talk about transformation anymore. Transformation's done, just talk about the business. And uh, what's going to be interesting to see is once they close Splunk, they're, they're going to be well over 50% ARR. Now, if you look at their multiple right now, yeah. they're trading at about 4X, which is where the hardware companies are. Software companies that larger than what they are trade yeah. from 8X to, I don't know, infinity, <laughs> right? And yeah, so yeah, right. once they close Splunk, yeah. it, what I'd like to see is are investors going to give them more of a software multiple or are they going to keep them in the hardware penalty box? Well, I, 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 think, I, think goes, they gotta, I think they're going to do interesting a- Interesting question. They got to do a CUDA moment. They need a CUDA moment for Cisco, which means they have to take their core platform and get the data out of it. I think they got to look at the generative AI and saying, we have to kind of make this a true platform with observability to get in and get the AI action. We heard from Dell's CTO and telecom, uh, um, Ateeb this morning saying, what is the impact of AI in telco? He said, it goes to the device. Cisco's got edge data, so the question is, well, can doesn't they pull Splunk it? actually give wait, wait, the wait, head wait, start? Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, I think Splunk is a real piece of the puzzle. Cisco is not going to have a CUDA moment, and here's why. <laughs> they can't. Okay, the CUDA moment for NVIDIA happened around late, late 2000s, I want to say 2008, where they basically said to the street, we're going to spend a boatload of money developing this software, and essentially we don't care about our stock price, and the thing tanked. There's no way Cisco can do that. There's no well, way they're going to do that. Kind of tanking now, so we'll, so, was that? No, I mean, I mean that, that well, stock would get destroyed. That's what Microsoft did too, right? They, get destroyed. They, Satya let that company burn to the ground before but he the, built it back up. But the difference yeah. with Microsoft is they had a software estate that threw off so much cash. Now Cisco throws off $15 so, billion I mean, dollars of cash flow a year, but I, to, to, to do that, the CEO would get fired. Now, maybe Chuck will initiate that. I mean, it's probably, I don't know, I, I was surprised. that Their software state, it's office, a little different, comparable, apples to oranges, but still platform that gave them leverage. I think my view on Cisco is they have a leverage platform with networking, and they got market share numbers that are awesome, so they have to kind of, when I say kudum, I mean they need a software layer that actually is going to be more than just window dressing. Well, that's they, what they're, the well, new, that's, yeah, that's they the are new doing security this. cloud and the networking yeah. cloud. They've consolidated all those products, they created a single back end for security, one for networking, and that's what they have to monetize, right? And because right now what they do is they sell hardware and then you buy the cloud after. They need to get customers thinking yeah. the cloud products first. Yeah, it's right? the so, ecosystem. So, so notwithstanding yeah. that it's, a, it's an Apple's Orange's software company versus hardware company, it's more like Microsoft, to your point, Zias, because they went sideways for years and then they really need a Nadella moment. Yeah. Right, somebody to come in, or, or even a Gelsinger moment, well, even though I think he's got <laughs> big means, challenges. That's implying that no, Chuck is going to be replaced. <laughs> well, he is. I mean, actually, it's surprising to me. I thought Chuck was like 52 years old. He's like 64. Is he really? He's 64 yeah, years he's old. I guess all the golfing plays keeps him in shape. Well, he looks <laughs> fantastic, but yeah. somebody pointed out to me, I said, he's not retiring, the guy's young. I looked it up, he's 64 years old. So has he announced his retirement? No, but okay, you know, so you're he's expected. been there eight years. Mm. Yeah. And so, I mean, anyway, my I point think is, he's got a few left. My point is, yeah, maybe yeah. a few. But my point is, as, as networking goes, Cisco goes. Yeah. And yeah. so for them to have, forget the CUDA-like moment, but it's going to be a long transformation. They're trying to do that with Splunk. Patrick Moorhead said today, "Well, you could be like Cloudera," and I was like, "Huh? What? Yeah. That made what? no sense to me. Yeah. Like, yeah. Be yeah. like Typically. Cloudera? What are you talking about? You're going to start doing database, data one. management? Yeah. No. But with Splunk, they they could have a big data platform." The question is, so here's the question. Does the CUDA moment come Cloud to era. them, right? Cloud era. So <laughs> it's always, they're a customer of theirs, that's why. So instead of chasing the CUDA moment, it could come to them. We live in a world today that's network centric. Everything we do, from mobile devices, cloud, IOT, connected cars, all runs over the network, right? So the quality of your network yes. really determines how your in-store experience is, how this, the experience in the, in the stadium is, how hospitals work, how schools work, and if, I think from here they need to convince the world yeah. that the center of your IT strategy is the network 
that'll create that value prop, and I think yeah. bring the CUDA moment to them. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I think that's the unification. So that's a big leap from there, right? Well, they got to they do the work. That's a unification, that's a value proposition, that's a disruptive enabler. It has to enable value, and that spits off revenue. So to me, you know, they have to use the observability trend that's being retooled, and clearly from this show, my takeaway, Cisco looks like a wounded animal right now. Okay, they look like, the way they're posturing in their in their um, that's a little harsh. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, well, well, <laughs> I think they just laid off four uh, four thousand people, another seven hundred. Amazon's uh, been laying off people. Apple's been laying off. I people. mean, everyone's feel, laid off people yeah. in the last couple of okay. months. Okay, I think the thing. I th the thing uh, go ahead, please. I, I think so. I think what you're all touching on here in in the details of this is the winners of the next few years are going to be the ecosystem players. It's the conversations that we've been having. It's not just going to be this, uh, you know, yes, network is a part of it, but I think it's going to be who's pulling in the biggest collaborators, and that's one of the things that NVIDIA does incredibly well. Yeah. They're, they're an ecosystem partner with pretty much everyone here. Well, that's, that's because the GPUs become the center of the world, yeah. right? In this particular supply chain moment, right. and, and this particular AI and moment. And so yeah. if, if the network does pivot that, who's got a bigger ecosystem than Cisco on the, on the networking side? Right, right? Yeah. Well, I, so exactly why, it's, there, there's still a lot of opportunity. I've been, here's I've, here's I've been your, covering Cisco since 1995, been close to the company, in the valley, on the East Coast, watching that technology, did routing tables at one point as an SC in my earlier days. They're a great company. They're, they're IP on the routing, switching, networking, they have basically a monopoly in my mind. They run networks. That is such a they massive... Do. I think they have a monopoly. I think they're as good as a monopoly. It's hard to rip them out. How do you replace Cisco? No one, name the people that replace Cisco. You got some niches there that get established in certain markets, but Cisco has such a great nested position. What about it's, HPE Juniper? I think they're a affordable competitor now that they're merged By together. By the way, you know. I forgot to adjust for, sure, so. for a share count. It was 546 billion at their peak. Okay. Sorry, just a bit, yeah, and, and you're right. Everybody said it could surpass a trillion, they surpassed Microsoft. Yeah. But here's what's missing, my opinion from Cisco. They have a full AI stack, starting with silicon, the networking, security, observability, they've got collaboration, applications, they've got AI all throughout the stack but they don't communicate an AI strategy. They're getting no tailwind yeah. for totally that. Totally agree it's with that, It's very Dave. bespoke. Totally I, agree I, with that. Yeah, they need to pull that. I think that's I, their coup de moment. I think there's uh, an opportunity in there for them to pull it together. They should have an AI czar. Have they hit you up? <laughs> we have great uh, <laughs> retrieval on the cube. Uh, well, the, the question about uh, Juniper well, is interesting. But, okay, they have good AI to help uh, really with AI ops, letting their, their customer use the products more efficiently they don't really sell AI, you know what I mean? Like, well, they, they, they claim they sell networks for AI, right. so that's the, the bottom of the stack, and they don't, you're right, they don't right. sell AI, but, I would argue but are though, there ways they could monetize I it? I mean, I would argue though, we, we used to always say that every company is a tech company, now every company is an AI company. So even if you're not selling it, you're supporting it, or you're providing yeah. solutions in that space, yeah. and if you're not telling that story, how are you going to attract other customers? Yeah. And I think you brought up a great point, Dave, we don't hear a lot from them. Yeah, already. Robbins did say though, they had 25 billion uh, in pipeline uh, for for AI, right? That should close in the next couple of years. So that's going to be interesting. So what was that? I, I asked them that question. But I'm curious about that. Like, that could you be a made click up on that? I yeah. talked about the waves and the transitions, how they're really difficult. So the, the so old that, and the so new. So that's the network that touches AI systems, right? So and that's so, Silicon One. Uh, oh, yeah, it's okay. all Silicon One stuff, right? And um, okay. So the other question I was asking him, basically implying that so Nvidia is sucking up all the capex. That was an right? interesting question. I thought, and, and yeah. he didn't really bite on it, but. But so NVIDIA last quarter, this is Charles Fitz, hit 50%, their revenue hit 50% of the CapEx spend of all the three, big three hyperscalers, which is an amazing stat. Now, that doesn't mean that they-, they That's they, unbelievable. That, that was all the CapEx there, but yeah, but yeah. Uh, a, a big chunk of the spend went to, to the, the hyperscalers. I think they said over half of their revenue went to hyperscalers. So you're talking about you know, 11, 12 billion just to sucked up by, by hyperscalers this past quarter. My point is, are they delaying some of the network purchases? And he sort of said, no, no, they're still buying, but, but, the, but what, what's that giant pipeline then in Silicon One? Why can't they service it? Well, I think, you know, customers, he, I saw Chuck's interview with CNBC on, when he was at Davos too, and he, he actually made a comment where he didn't really think customers were all that far along in AI, and I think that's, you know, that data exactly. point where he talked about pipeline is probably it, so there's plans to do it, you got to buy a lot of the infrastructure first and then you bring in the network to support it. And so, One of the things uh, I agreed with that he said is a lot of customers are saying, we're not going to spend, we're keeping it for AI, 
We don't know what we're going to spend it on. We know it's AI, yeah. but we're not going to spend it on Well, they did on that with cloud stuff. and things like that in the past. The question yeah, is, what does sure. AI for Cisco mean? I mean, like I said, the AI that they could harvest for their own benefit for a platform is different than what they offer as a solution. So where's the value proposition for the customer? Well, there's certainly I'll make the argument that Cisco could, should, should tap AI for their own operational yeah. platform, because they have a lot of data, and then two, what's the pivot to the enablement side to say, hey, we're going to be a disruptive enabler for you, the customer. So, like routing and switching, that was an enablement opportunity to connect people, devices, and campuses. Well, look, what, what's the AI uh, value problem? We invited, huh? we invited Chuck on to talk about this. He, he, you know, did, he probably never got the invite, but Antonio, I thought, and Juniper, yeah, yeah. Stepped CEO up. Rami, stepped up. Michael Dell came on and talked about yeah. their AI strategy. To me, it's much more clear yeah. So I'd love to have, we, had, we invited Jonathan on as well, hopefully he'll come on tomorrow. Yeah, but when I say wounded animal, I'm a little bit harsh, I will admit that Cisco, I'm No, but I understand what you're saying, they're, they're, they're taking they're, shots they're right Their posture, now. they're bunkering in, right? They're like, okay, they got a heel, they got a massive layoff, their, their press and their analyst motions are kind of subtled, subdued I mean, a little bit. For, you know, they got 80,000 employees, so you're talking, yeah. 8%, so. But, yeah. but to, I'm to not your I'm point, not though, I'm not impressed with them. But to, your, them. But to Zias's point, they lowered guidance, and then they had a lower guidance again, what, yeah. by 2.4 billion? Yeah. I mean, that's do big downturns. You lower guidance to a point where you know you can hit it or beat right. it. Right. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Especially and with a company as venerable as Cisco. There's an old saying on Wall Street, the first disappointment is rarely the last. And th that was the case here. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I do think, you know, what I brought up in the Rami interview yesterday though, that AI for networking needs to be in place before you can do networking for AI, and I think that's really, it'll be, it'll be fascinating to see which one of these networking companies actually is able to yeah. capitalize on that. Because I do believe, Likewise. Chuck, that he's got the big pipeline. Jay Shree said the same with Arista. They got a massive pipeline for networking yeah. for AI, but if you can't do AI in the network, I'm not yeah. so sure you should be deploying networks to support AI. Why is that pipeline not, it's just because they can't yeah. deliver? I mean, NVIDIA's I got don't a think, huge I pipeline think, too, but they, they're, they're, they're crushing they their GPUs. Because I, so. I think GPUs, so if you product. look historically, Because they can't get GPUs. Can, can, no, I, Compute has always led networking and sales, right? So people move to branch offices, then you buy all the network infrastructure to support it. People move to the cloud, then you buy all the network infrastructure to support it. So if they're buying GPUs now. Compute leads networking, yes. is what you're and saying. That's always so, okay, so this and is a, to your point, they got a monopoly. Yes. So you feel like. I love Cisco's value. I always love that company. They have, love, they. Well, they have that's a, the big question. Do they get more than a 4X multiple after Splunk closes? And uh, we'll see how they yeah. can get to the software side. Yeah. Rather than patching together acquisitions and kind of like putting a little, close the curtain behind everything and saying, hey, they kind of work together, but do they really work together? So that's the but, question. But, but Jay Shree's getting an AI multiple. Yes. Right? Mist? Nobody else is Mist really. got an AI multiple. Mist did, but Juniper didn't. Okay, but yeah. where, where would they be without Mist? Well, did, they wouldn't be getting they, they, 14 billion. They got billion. the multiple sucked into their yeah. evaluation. But they wouldn't be getting 14 well, billion from, from HPE. No, they would not. Without that. Yeah, so yeah. that was, what, if, if they pay, what they pay for Mist? 400 million? Roughly 430? Yeah. Yeah. What, what, how much of that 14 billion is missed in your estimation? A oh, a good, at least a third. A third, you made, 30 yeah. or 40%, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. Yeah. All right, so, so question for you guys, that, that you, since you brought it up, Dave, about Juniper and HPE, can they compete with Cisco? All right, now that we had Antonio, uh, the CEO of HPE and the CEO of Juniper on, um, and since you guys had a little side briefing with the CEO of Cisco, what is the opportunity for HPE? Can they compete with Cisco? I mean, I think, I think Aruba, yes. could, uh, Aruba could hang on their own, but clearly. Well, I, I think oh, Aruba's doing pretty well. Yeah, I think <laughs> the opportunity here is, uh, you know, we've been talking about, uh, you know you're a big fan of engineered systems, right? Yeah. Because the world disaggregated everything and nobody can put the stuff back together. And HPE is as full stack a company as anybody. Storage, servers, I mean, now they have all the networking Absolutely. stuff, they got AI, and if they can apply MIST to compute, they could deliver a full turnkey AI system that storage, servers, networking, AI, all that put together, right? And, um, and I think that's HPE's opportunity to compete with Cisco. Now, Cisco's got the same assets, minus the storage, I suppose. What's the install base on networking? Because Juniper has a lot of service providers, but do they have the enterprise penetration that They Cisco have the has. enterprise compute penetration. Cisco's got network, and you need both to make AI work, so here comes what, where, who's going to win the battle? HPE has enterprise compute penetration, yeah. right? So yeah, exactly. the interesting thing to me is, if you're Dell, you're looking at this going, 
Hmm. Maybe we missed an opportunity yeah. here. To no, uh, well, no, no, I, Dell's I, I, messed well, their network yeah. strategy. Yeah, they're done. Yeah. The, wait, wait. What, you, what do you mean? No, no, no. no they're networking. I think they missed the networking thing. I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, on that. I, I, but their what, compute what? server business is going to transform into clusters. I, and Michael, Explain that. So Michael Dell smiled yesterday when I brought up the whole systems revolution, and then Etab was on earlier. Yeah. And he said, no, the the systems are going to be clustered. So that's like a server. So sales on, if you're HP and Dell, you're in the systems business. You build PCs and servers. Basically these micro clouds are going to be clustered on-premise cluster clouds. And so that's Dell's going to mop here's, that up. Here's, I think Dell's going to mop that compute business yeah, up and the GPUs will shift into, yeah, shifting between GPUs and CPUs and these engineered systems. I think Dell's, the Dell's Achilles heel is no we, network. But here, here's the, exactly, here's the problem Ethernet. with that. No wait, here's the problem with that. they don't have that. <laughs> Hold on, here's the problem with that, is, is servers is a 30% gross margin business, maybe 35%, at why? Best, at best. Why, because Intel and now NVIDIA are sucking up all the gross margin. Yep. Networks is a 65% gross margin business. So that's why I like it's a great point. Antonio's move, saying we're now a networking company. And they have silicon too, so they, have, they got silicon as well as. Smart. Well it was interesting you know. to hear Rami talk about, uh, uh, you know, on the one hand, you know, how valuable it is to have silicon, but I don't think he was really high on silicon one. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, of course, he doesn't, silicon he doesn't work there. Right, right, so. I don't know if you understand why people have such a hard time understanding the value of network silicon. Like, the, the analogy I use is if you look, why is the GPU a thing? Well, because general purpose processors couldn't do graphics, right? And what silicon one is, it's the network equivalent to that. You can't run, uh, and there's so much stuff you do with the network processor that general purpose processors can't do, yep. you're better off building your own. I mean, Fortinet does that with security. Right? Yeah. And so, and they, they get a big price for I think if you have the volume, system on chip yeah. is a great business model and I mean, too. Who, I mean, they have, they have the volume. Yeah, if you have the volume, it's, it makes yeah. perfect sense yeah. to me to design silicon. So merchant yeah. silicon versus custom chips, Dave. What was your takeaway from your, we've had a lot of hallway, hallway conversations. Guys, what's your take on, you know, because the, the, the custom silicon and systems on a chip stuff is good purpose built stuff. But merchant we, silicon has to be differentiated. AMD's differentiated because they're beating Intel. Uh, Broadcom is differentiated because they're focused on connectivity. Obviously, NVIDIA is differentiated. Qualcomm is executing on a differentiation strategy. So if you have a differentiated strategy and you have wafer volume, it makes sense. I do think yep. that Cisco One. Has a, has a differentiated strategy, they've got design chops, you're saying they've got volume. Yeah, I mean, right? so, look at the size of their network business. So to me it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. uh, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, they've all got wafer volume capability, so it makes them makes sense for them to design their own okay, silicon. So. I, I actually think, I think Dell should think about designing its own silicon, but they've said, nah, that's not okay, for so us. Okay, so Juniper, what's their alternative to the silicon one? Well, they have, they've well, yeah, got their own silicon. It, slingshot. Yeah. yeah. Right? HPE, how's, the vol how's that H volume? HPE slingshot. Well, the volume is the size tiny. of the install base, so. It's tiny, yeah. HPE yeah. slingshot's yeah. tiny, but it's very specialized around high performance computing, so maybe they can get away with that. You know? The reality is we're going to need a lot of different silicon solutions to make it through this next AI leap across yeah. verticals in, yeah. in yeah. tech as a whole. Go to I, siliconangle.com to check out all the action. I, yeah, I mean, but there's <laughs> startup players too, there's companies like Rock, that, it's and, not just going to be the old And that players. statement actually is why Intel is in the poor position that they're in. Well, I think so. too, I think too, a lot of people rightly say exactly what you just said. There's going to be a lot of silicon diversity yeah. and a lot of specialization, but I would say this, very few are going to be able to get monopoly-like margins, and I think NVIDIA will, and I think they'll be able to sustain them for quite some time. I think that's a really brilliant note to end on. Otherwise, we could end up talking about silicon and Cisco for the next two hours here. Yeah. And, I know and this I, was kind of a we Cisco missed the whole Amazon uh, Web Services conversation. We had Dr. Ishwar Pekalaran, but she's technologist. Uh, interesting, Amazon's pushing that, but we can get that tomorrow on the kickoff. Maybe. Yeah, we can start hot and fresh after this wonderfully yeah. spicy analyst well, insights. But we right did, now. if I may, we did have some awesome guests on today and yesterday. We really did, Dave. I think if, you know Antonio Caitlin. kicked it off. Yeah, Caitlin uh, from uh, Halfordy, who's uh, the chief data officer at Ericsson. Rami was Rami was guest of the day. No offense. Well, you actually you were on that, so that was good. Yeah. Rami was amazing. Michael Dell was heading out to the airport, so he was kind of in and out. But we really appreciate him coming on, and he gave us some great insights and more to come. 
Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. we had an honest teach. We've had some really great stories on. And we are only halfway through our coverage, folks, from our four days of coverage here, live in Barcelona, Spain, at Mobile World Congress. My name's Savannah Peterson, and you're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech. Thank you.